Here's an example of a GCSE Fine Art exam. Um, this is an example of a Grade 8 student. I want to share some key points that you'll need to know for your examination. It's 40% of your overall GCSE grade, and you can only choose one starting point from the exam paper, and you will be given nine school weeks and a half term holiday to complete your preparation work. You'll be expected to produce work in lessons and independently in your own time. After school support and workshops will be available. Throughout your sketchbook, you must annotate your work and ideas so the examiner can read your thought processes. The exam is 10 hours. Uh, and it's time for you to complete your final outcome, which is assessment objective number four. You cannot add to the book or piece, the final piece, after the 10 hour exam, and you cannot take your book home with you in between those days, those two days. Do not forget your sketchbook or any preparation on the exam day. And you can start your final piece before the 10 hour exam, for example, drawing it up but you must photograph what it looks like before the exam. But the key thing is time management is key to success in the exam period. Here's the GCSE assessment criteria. Uh, the tasks set cover all four assessment objectives. Each one is uh, out of uh, 24, uh, a total of 96 marks. And to achieve a grade eight, then you'll need to get between 74 and 79 marks. And they were taken from the 2023 grade boundaries. So assessment objective number one is developing ideas through contextual understanding. So developing ideas, researching artists, sources um, to influence your ideas. Assessment objective number two is exploring, experimenting and refining your ideas. So using a range of materials and processes, selecting most appropriate ones to use, demonstrating you can refine, improve your ideas as they progress, and then recording ideas, observations and insights relevant to intentions is assessment objective number three. So drawing through any media photography and your written annotations. Uh, and then AO4, realising your intentions. So to present a personal, informed and meaningful response. So it's your final outcome, your final piece, which links to your ideas and artists develop. So that's assessment objective number four. Um, if I read to you the words um, descriptions for a grade eight student, your work needs to be convincingly highly developed, clearly highly developed, adequately highly developed. So the student has decided to pursue the theme expression. Um, this slide shows her developing ideas, assessment objective one, and recording ideas, observations and insights to intentions. Uh, there's a visual brainstorm and there is a, a mind map. Now the mind map on the right hand side um, shows a broad range of words to reflect the theme of expression. Um, she's thinking literally and laterally, so outside of the box. Um, she has included within that mind map techniques that you could use to show expression, uh, colours to reflect an expression, artists who explore expression in their work. She uses tier three vocabulary, so specialist art vocabulary, the words impasto, um, which is the use of textured paint to create um, an expression within art. Um, on the left hand side is a collage of imagery and also words um, to help with her ideas further. Um, the images are primary and secondary images. 
exploring expression, digging deeper into the theme, um, looking at subheadings, emotion, looking at kind of joyful, happy emotions juxtaposed with sad, depressed, lonely emotions, expressions. Even the way she's the way in which she's presented the collage, she's got some of the edges of her imagery and her text. They've been ripped, uh, torn edges, which kind of give a sense um, of anger. So a technique can also evoke um, an expression, an emotion. So at this stage, students then research artists of their choice. Um, that obviously link to their starting point, her starting point of expression. So this is assessment objective number one, developing ideas through contextual understanding. So researching into appropriate artists. This um, photographer, in fact, Douglas Gordon, uh, would influence her theme of expression. Uh, he chooses to photograph portraits, but then manipulate them further by tearing, ripping, burning, fragmenting. And these techniques kind of give the give connotations of, of feeling kind of anger or sad or sorrow. So all of these words kind of reflect the theme of expression. Um, she's also made a sustained pastiche of the artist's work. So she has decided to do a really confident drawing um, of the artist's work, the one with the burnt eyes on the right hand side. So this is developing an understanding of how they work for them to then progress um, to make their own work in the style of that artist. So at this stage, um, the student would then take a set of photographs. Uh, linking to the theme of expression. So this covers assessment objective number three, recording ideas, observations and insights relevant to intentions. So she took a set of photographs of um, a model showing different expressions, making different facial expressions, uh, showing different poses. This links to her theme, this links to her artist, Douglas Gordon. Um, She's got a set of smaller images in the top left hand corner. We call those a contact sheet. So they're the raw images that she takes. Um, she then develops them uh, using Photoshop. She crops into them uh, to zoom into those expressions, those poses. She turns them to black and white. She changes the contrast, the light, the shadow, giving a real sense of chiaroscuro. All of these edits link back to Douglas Gordon and his style of work. From them, she then um, records using a variety of fine arts skills. Uh, she records using biro, um, but not just on a plain background. So the bottom right hand corner was a biro recording, exploring um, monochromatic style further. But she doesn't record just on a plain background. The background is a kind of patchy, emulsion painted background. Um, she does this onto this background because it also potentially emphasizes an expression or an emotion, the kind of fragility potentially um, of that person. Um, she digs deeper into other techniques when recording from observation. She paints from her photographs, top right hand corner, using acrylic paint, blending really skillfully, uh, the tonal modelling to make three dimensional kind of um, effects. Um, the backgrounds of the middle one at the top, coffee background. She uses uh, ink and emulsion paint the man kind of with his mouth wide open, creating a very kind of angry kind of expression. But the dull coffee background kind of adds to this kind of subdued kind of expression. 
so yeah, on the left hand corner, bottom left hand corner, she has used bleach, she's painted with bleach onto a black ink background. All of these ways of recording, um, digging deeper into these techniques, all generates kind of further ideas within the theme of expression. So at this stage, students then develop their own work in the style of the artist even further. Uh, they explore and experiment and refine their ideas, so assessment objective number two. So from her edited photographs, she then works uh, using a technique using monoprinting, making these monochromatic uh, portraits, which uh, link to the photographer Douglas Gordon. And she manipulates them in many ways. She tears the edges of these prints. She burns them. She destroys it. She distorts them. Um, and I suppose these techniques kind of evoke um, a concept of anger or frustration. Um, she's really thoughtful with her techniques, um, evoking a message or an idea, a concept or a feeling. She's really good at articulating this as well within her annotations. Um, she's also got on the bottom there um, a really convincingly recorded um, sustained drawing, uh, which almost looks realistic, um, again, linking to photography. So creating this kind of photorealistic kind of uh, experiment. Um, she's really convincingly highly developed um, with her ideas and she demonstrates um, critical understanding of her artists um, within her explanations within her work. So still continuing um, experiment slash development, so assessment objective number two, we offer um, workshops after school for those more um, able students uh, where we deliver more ambitious techniques to them. This particular technique was called gum Arabic printing. Um, and these edited photos were printed onto these kind of distressed backgrounds. Uh, again, really digging deep into techniques and reviewing and refining her ideas. So students uh, then look at a second artist, uh, so developing more ideas through contextual understanding, assessment objective number one. This student um, decided to study the work of Leonardo da Vinci, so quite a contrast to um, Douglas Gordon's work. These expressions within these paintings are quite godly and angelic, so contrasting Douglas Gordon's um, dark and distressed work. So it's always good to kind of really push your ideas, try to find artists that are different in style, different in ideas. The more idea, the broader ideas, the better. So the same process uh, as Douglas Gordon, she would then take a set of photographs. Uh, these photos link to Leonardo da Vinci, uh, the kind of the godly element to his work, the angelic element, but also the, the lack of emotion as well within his work. Um, these contrast Douglas Gordon uh, in the fact that expression is shown through colour and composition. She's always annotating her work as well. Um, it's clear we understand her thought process. Uh, she's always linking her ideas to her theme. Her ideas are always linking to her artists. So from her set of photographs inspired by Leonardo da Vinci, she then uh, develops her ideas further by exploring, experimenting and refining her work, which links to assessment objective number two. Uh, she develops her techniques further, wet, dry materials, combining materials. Uh, she's expanding her, te her techniques to link to Leonardo da Vinci and she's always convincingly articulating her ideas, critically analysing and evaluating her work. 
She then references um, a third artist, and this links to developing ideas through contextual understanding again, so assessment objective number one. So the more artists you research, the more ideas you will gain. And she uses not necessarily the, the, the pointless kind of dotting, dabby painted technique, but more the, the colour and the tone, which potentially could influence her colour palette. Um, when making ideas for a final piece and the idea that colour can create um, an expression within work. Students are then at the stage where they start developing their ideas for making a final piece. Um, so this is assessment objective number one. We would say the minimum requirement would be to plan for three different ideas, but this student really pushes her ideas. She's got at least six ideas for a final piece um, to reflect the theme of expression. And she shows um, varied uh, compositions. Her final piece orientation could potentially be portrait or landscape or within a circle. So. I'm just going to read you um, her explanation um, for her chosen idea, which is the top right hand corner one. It says the close up portrait reflects the emotion and pressure society places on girls. The close up showing how they feel trapped and closed in, unable to express themselves. The tape and hands distorting the face show the force placed on them to conform, to fit in. And in this case, fit in the canvas. Use of colour on the girl shows her expression, while the black and white shows the plainness of not being able to express yourself. So, as mentioned within her annotations, her ideas are really thoughtful, conceptual, she then wants to explore different colourways. Um, so she does two colour studies um, to dig deeper into her theme of expression. She annotates her, her work further here by explaining what areas link to which artists, what techniques link to which artists. Um, so all of this comes under developing ideas, assessment objective number one, and also assessment objective two, exploring and experimenting and reviewing and refining those ideas before she makes her final outcome. The student then uh, decided to take a new set of photographs of um, different models, different poses. She reviews and refines her work consistently throughout her book. Um, she's deciding on which poses to use, how she wants to use colour and how she wants to incorporate the black and white element within it. And finally, assessment objective number four, where the student makes her final outcome in the 10 hour exam. She makes uh, a final piece on MDF wood using acrylic paint. Um, it's a highly developed ability to present a personal and meaningful final piece, realising her theme of expression, so reflecting the emotion and pressure society places on girls, uh, the close-up showing how they feel trapped and closed in and unable to express themselves. So she does this with real confidence and conviction.